and to hear how you have uh, persevered through this past year. And so all these questions were written by these students that you see in front of you. Maybe there's one person absent. I don't even know. No, no everybody's here. Everybody's here. Troy just angled so that the camera can see. Yeah. Yes. They were written by all of the students you see in front of you. And um, we have the volunteer panel sitting closest to you. And the rest of us in the audience will be great audience members. And, uh, oh, that's great. and we're super <laughs> excited. <laughs> Thank you for taking time out of your day for being here with us. So we're really excited. I'll let the panel introduce themselves and take it away. I'm Maeve. I'm Madison. I'm Troy. I'm Armand. And I'm Pia. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We're going to ask you some questions. If there's anything you're not um, comfortable answering, just let us know and we'll move on. Okay. Tell us a little bit about the community you live in. So I live in Petaluma and I work in Santa Rosa and it is two very different communities even though we are in the same county. Petaluma is very much um, a lot of younger families, more um, breweries and more laid back. Um, Santa Rosa, I think, is a little bit more of the mature people in, in our community. Um, so it's a nice little balance between the two. Uh, how long have you lived in Petaluma? I have lived in Petaluma for four years. And I, I grew up in Sonoma County, though, and grew up in Santa Rosa. Mm -hmm. What are your favorite things about uh, living in Petaluma? It is very easy to get around places. So you can walk to downtown. I live very close to downtown. There's a lot of places to go for walks and hikes. I Part of my law school career was in San Francisco, and it was a very, very different environment because if you were going to drive anywhere, you need to give yourself at least a half hour extra to try to find parking. Um, a lot of it was public transportation. It wasn't um, very commuter friendly, whereas Petaluma is very family and um, just being able to get around, you can walk anywhere. Who do you prefer living in Petaluma or San Francisco? Petaluma. San Francisco is too much for me. <laughs> in fifth grade, you love to read. Do you have any favorite authors or books? My favorite, I used to love to read. I don't get to do it as much right now. But my favorite book growing up was The Secret Garden. Can you tell me about something that you really enjoy doing in your free time? <laughs> right now, I enjoy sleeping. I have a five, almost six month old. So there's not much sleep. So my hobbies have changed a little bit. <laughs> um, could you share with us a recent family, a family um, event that you enjoy? So in, in November, I had a baby, I had my first son, and with COVID, we weren't going to be able to, people couldn't come visit us in the hospital. So for Thanksgiving, we did um, a family Thanksgiving, everybody was quarantined and that people had started to get vaccinated in their families, so we were able to do an actual Thanksgiving with both of our families. What is your son's name? His name is Charles, but we call him Charlie. Oh, that's cute. Can you tell me about a favorite memory from your childhood? Oh, goodness. Um, my family used to drive to Mexico every year for summer. We would go for, it was a three week vacation that we would take. And I remember this was, I have three younger brothers. So this was just when it was myself and the oldest of the boys. So I was probably seven or eight around the time. And we would do this every summer. We would drive from here all the way to visit our family in Mexico. It was a three day drive, um, but it was really fun. My parents made it fun for us. They would, we had a big van so we could sleep most of the time, watch all the movies we wanted to watch. Um, and we got to visit all of our family in Mexico. Uh, what types of movies, shows, or media are we watching these days? So, this is my, my little secret. Um, I like to watch reality TV because I cannot handle 
watching all the news right now. It is a lot. Um, it is not always good news. So I like to just watch mindless television to get my mind off of everything. Um, because between my job being so stressful and then the news that you're hearing, it's nice to just something that's mindless and you can just kind of get lost in the TV. Is well, Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, because I also like um, true crime stories, so. Is there any specific reality TV shows that you have? <laughs> we know them all. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have now watched all of The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Um, I had never watched that particular one, but working from home and being by myself all day, it's very quiet in my house, and I don't like silence. So I like to have something playing in the background so I don't feel so by myself. So I started watching, I think there was like 11 seasons of it. So I just got all caught up. Took a long time. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your job. So I am a family law attorney, also known as a divorce attorney. So my job is helping people that are getting divorced, um, also people that are um, we're never married, but they have children together. So we work with them to try and resolve, ideally resolve things outside of court and be able to reach agreements. And it has to do with all aspects of a family. So if they were married, the division of their assets, um, if it's children, like figuring out, you know, where is the child gonna go on each day? So all of that. Um, how did you start working as an attorney? So I started, when I was in law school, I volunteered at, um, it's called the Family um, Facilitator's Office in the Oakland Courthouse. Um, that, that office helps people that um, can't afford an attorney and you help them fill out all the paperwork and get prepared for their case. Um, so I started there and then when I moved back to Sonoma County, I started working with my now boss as a legal assistant while I finished law school. And then when I got, when I passed the bar and got my license, I began working as an attorney for her. Yeah, what do you uh, find most fulfilling about your job? I really like when I'm able to help people resolve an issue without having to go to court. Um, because of the type of law that I'm in, it's a lot of emotions, it's a very difficult, um, and it is best for people to figure, to try and resolve it themselves. So it's always really nice when we have a case where someone came to me and they were maybe not even speaking to their ex-significant other, um, and by the end of, of me helping the family, they're able to you know, talk again or be able to resolve issues themselves. I really yeah. like helping people solve their own problems. Yeah, do you enjoy doing your job? I do, most days. There's some days that it's hard. <laughs> yeah. uh, what is your dream job? I really like what I do. I've, I've, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a teacher. Um, and then I started to get really interested in the law. And I kind of fell into family law. It wasn't exact. I thought I wanted to do criminal law, but then I realized what criminal attorneys actually have to do. And I decided that was not for me. So I really enjoy what I do. How has COVID affected your personal life? So, <laughs> this is a tough one. Um, so I started working from home on the week before the shutdown happened. My boss was proactive and shut down the office and had us all start working from home. That was also around the time that I found out I was pregnant. Um, so it was all, it was a lot all at once. Um, and then on top of that, my husband works for Stanford Health, so he works at a clinic, um, and things were very hectic for them for a long time. So it was um, a big adjustment to start working from home. My husband was working very long hours. I was pregnant. It was just, it was a lot of, a lot of things all at once. Um, we had a couple of COVID scares for his clinic. Um, so it was, it's been an interesting year and a half. <laughs> How has COVID affected your workload? So our office was a lot more prepared 
to work from home than the majority of offices we learned. Um, we have always kept, um, or not always, but for many years now, we have kept all of our files scanned and have access to them through our computer. Um, and the attorneys also had access to our work computers from home. So we were kind of already set up a little bit. Um, so it's been interesting though, because in the time during COVID, we have hired a new attorney and a new um, paralegal that have never worked with us in the same office. So when we do go back to the office, it's gonna be a big change. So we went from two attorneys and two paralegals to three attorneys and three paralegals. Um, so it's, it's gonna be interesting, but we also learned that a lot of offices were not prepared to have to work remotely. Um, there were people, there were offices that completely shut down and were not able to continue working because they couldn't be in the same building as um, their staff and they, they didn't have access to their files or um, our court was closed for a month and so that was really impactful for um, when we did reopen it's been they're still not completely caught up what do you think was the best part about being prepared it made it easy to continue doing our work so we our office never shut down we never had to um, turn people away we were able to continue to help all of our clients um, and continue to be able to do what we've been doing it was just that now we're in each of us are in our own homes so it was a little it was pretty seamless there was a couple things we had to figure out like checking the mail <laughs> because we were still getting mail at the office um, but I know that there was a lot of other offices that had a much harder time um, did you get more people um, because you were like one of the only ones that we have there was a period in time I think right at the beginning where everybody was just a little scared about what the heck is going on that we were kind of slow, slower than we're used to. Um, but then once that period, it was like maybe a couple weeks, we started to get really busy. And right now, I don't think we've ever been busier. Um, yeah. What types of things did you do to uh, cope with the quarantine? A lot of TV. Um, <laughs> I, we, I try to do some distance um, get togethers with friends outdoors. We would do um, like everybody bring their own food and we would be in a backyard. So trying to do things to stay some Zoom get togethers, um, things to be able to stay connected to people because I was by myself all day. So I, I needed some human interaction. What do you think was the best part about being, um, about COVID, about like the walk? the lockdown um, I was able to take naps during my lunch break <laughs> so at the very beginning of COVID is when I was first pregnant I was very very tired um, and I was able because I was working from home during my lunch break I could just go take a nap had I been in the office I would I didn't used to take um, lunch breaks so it would have been a much more difficult pregnancy I think <laughs> Overall, uh, do you enjoy uh, working like uh, at your work or online better? Overall, yes. It's um, family law is very hard. It's stressful. Um, people essentially are paying an attorney so that they don't have to worry. So they just push everything onto you, and it's our responsibility to try to fix a lot of very difficult problems but I enjoy being able to do that and I enjoy being able to help people, like I said, fix their own problems and come to their own resolutions. Uh, what did you do during the stay at home order while you weren't working? Um, so for a period of time, I, I was on maternity leave for three months, so I was trying to figure out how to keep, keep a little human alive. Um, what else? I did not do any reno home renovations like other people did. I There was a lot of, like I said, TV watching. I did make sourdough bread. Um, it was really good. Um, I learned how to make homemade pizza. And oh, I got into a cookie making time. So a little bit of cooking and a little bit of relaxing. <laughs> In the next five to eight years, how do you think the world will have changed due to COVID? Oh, goodness. So I think the use of technology is, is going to be so much more in effect than it was before. Um, we have had to learn very quickly to get out of our comfort zone and just make things work. 
Um, for example, right now, court is being done through Zoom, which is something that never would have been an option before COVID. Um, if you couldn't be in court physically, we would appear via phone. It was not, I mean, Zoom's not ideal, but it does make it a little bit easier than being on the phone. Um, and my understanding from the court is that they're gonna continue to allow people to appear via Zoom, which will be very nice for the people that aren't in the area. And so then they, they don't have to fly here or travel. Um, it's been another area that we saw that was a big change was, so as attorneys, we have to, to do what's called mandatory continuing legal education. So we have to, every year we have to continue to learn the law because it changes so much. Um, and before, all of those presentations were in person. You would go in, you would go, you know, even if it was an hour meeting or an hour presentation, you know, it's like half an hour to get there, do your meeting, and then leave. And so now they're doing a lot of them through Zoom and webinars, and it's just making it a lot more convenient. Um, so that, I think, is something that's also going to continue, and that's a big shift from what we're used to. Do you think uh, the world is going to change for the better? I hope so. Um, I think that all of this has made us realize a lot of things, um, such as the importance of the relationships that we have with people, um, the fact that we couldn't hug our family or see our friends, I think has had a big impact on people and you're learning the importance of those people that you have in your life and the importance of having such a good support system. Uh, what were your thoughts about COVID-19 when you first heard about it? I, I didn't, again, I don't like to watch the news, so this is where it's a problem for me, but I didn't really know what it was. For me, fortunately, might because my husband works in the medical field, they were prepared. He had all the information, so I have, um, relied heavily on him giving me information because they're getting it directly from the source and it was it was a lot because there everything was changing on a day-to-day -day basis so it was so unknown um, that I it, it was just it was hard to keep up with everything but I was fortunate that I had someone that was getting the information directly from the source uh, yeah do you think it would have been better if you uh, listened to like the actual news I don't know. Um, I mean, I did start watching the news to figure out, you know, what the heck is going on in our world. But I, I think it's very important for all of us to do our own research to look at various sources and not just one source. Um, it's, you know, if you put all your eggs in one basket and you're just going to watch this one news avenue, then you're, I don't think you're getting the full picture. Yeah. Were you ever worried about contracting the virus? Yes. So it was what, probably in early March. Um, my husband's clinic, they found out that there was someone that was positive in their clinic um, and everybody had to get tested. Um, and this was very odd, early on in my pregnancy. I also have asthma, so I was already high risk before being pregnant. Um, so that was a period of time where we had to wait and see and hope that he hadn't been um, exposed to it. And there was a couple of times that that happened. Um, and so I think for me and my husband, we were both very cautious because we were concerned because of the pregnancy and we, we didn't know what, it, what, what would happen. Yeah, like how did that work? Did you like stay at home most of the time? Like I did not really leave the house for several months. Um, not even to go to the grocery store. If we needed something from the store, my husband would go. Um, when he would come home from work, because he was never able to, to stay home, he had to go into work. So he would come home, completely change his clothes, wash his hands, would not come near me. Um, still, he still does that with, um, with our baby and myself. He, he changes everything, washes down, and makes sure that, that he's not bringing anything into the house. Um, so it was, it's been an, an adjustment. Have you had any other experiences with academics or pandemics? No, I have not. Um, how do you think life will change once everyone's vaccinated? I think that this is probably 
it has taught us a lot of lessons, um, and I think it's going to be a long road for us to get back to what we call normal, yeah. because it's going to be, you know, there's going to be a new normal, um, and I think people are going to be very cautious, and it's not going to be something where all of a sudden everybody stops wearing a mask and everybody's going around hugging each other. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be, we're going to have a little bit of a slow process to get back to it. How long do you think that will take? I don't know. It's hard. I, I keep hearing different dates um, of when people think that things are going to change. I think there's so much uncertainty. Um, I would hope that it would be soon, but then I, I know that we just we don't know there's so much we don't know about this what has been a difficult challenge in your life that um that you're working to overcome what well, has been a difficult what what has been a difficult challenge in your life that you are working to overcome um just in general or during the pandemic in general so one thing that has always been it's something that's always kind of in the back of my mind that I'm dealing with is that, um, well, there's a couple. So one, I get um, a lot of people telling me that they don't think I'm a real attorney because I'm too young. <laughs> so that's always a fun thing having to um, explain to people that just because you're young doesn't mean that you don't know what you're doing and I actually am quite experienced. Um, there's also that I am Mexican and I've had a lot of, um, it's interesting how people talk to me or what they think because I don't look Mexican. So it's always been kind of a, a challenge that I have to deal with. Um, I've had people that when they hear me speak Spanish, they, I've had people that's, that are speaking Spanish thinking that I don't understand what they're saying. Um, I've also had people that say very derogatory things about Mexican people or Hispanic people just in general not realizing that that's me. So that's always something that is um, that I deal with. Uh, tell me about a time in your life when you felt misunderstood. What do you usually do when that happens? Oh, um, when I was in high school, I had told my counselor that I wanted to apply to UC Berkeley. Um, I applied to several UCs and my counselor told me I did not have the grades that I would never get in and it wasn't worth me trying. Um, mind you, I had above a 4.0 and was a good student. Um, so that interaction with her has always made me, or has made me into a person where if someone tells me that I can't do it and it's something that I know I can, I want to prove them wrong. So I didn't listen to my counselor, I applied and I got into the school. And so I think it's very important to not let people discourage you from what you want to do. Are you glad that happened? Uh, or? I think it was a big lesson for me that there's always going to be people that are not rooting for you and that what's important is for you to root for yourself. Um, if you decided to have listened to your counselor and not apply to UC Berkeley, where do you think you would have applied to? So I actually got in, but I didn't go to Berkeley. <laughs> I ended up going to UC Davis. I applied more than anything just to prove her wrong that I could do it. Um, but after going to the two schools, I realized that Davis was a better fit for me. Um, who has influenced you most, most in your life? My mom has been a big influence in my life. She was a single mother from very young. She, at 19 years old, she was a widow. And she has, she's a very strong person. She taught me to never like, depend on other people, like make sure that I can take care of myself, um, which is part of the reason that I wanted to be an attorney. I, I see this happen so much with people um, in my work life where one person is just, has been very dependent on the other and then all of a sudden you just don't know what you're gonna do and that's what happened to my mom when, um, when my dad passed away. So she has made me into a very strong person, very strong-willed, um, and she is someone that is willing to take, um, to just try things out, and, and if it doesn't work, then you try something else. Um, what is one of the goals you have for your life, and how will you achieve it? I have, 
a very broad goal, is I want to make the world a better place. And I know that it's I'm just one person, but I think that you being a good person can have a ripple effect. So I always work to try to make whatever situation I'm in better than before it was, or try to do something to, to improve, be it the community, be it your you know, group that I'm in, or a committee that I'm in, but try to improve where you are so that, because I do believe that there's a ripple effect. And when people say I'm only one person, well, you know, elections have been won and lost over one or two people, so it does make a big difference. Um, uh, that is all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. And then now I'd love to open it if there are any like off the cuff questions or questions that we haven't um, previewed or written up before. Um, I personally, I would just love to hear more about your job. I'm fascinated by that. I wonder if you can tell us about maybe like a successful interaction you've had with a couple or a family and then maybe one that was particularly difficult. So, a successful one, I, so I'm, I am a litigator, which means that I go to court and I argue to the judge, um, but I'm also a mediator. So I also will work with families um, as the neutral person to try and help them reach a resolution outside of court. Um, success stories are, I, I've had both as mediators and as um, litigation, I've had cases where um, like I had one case where the parents were not speaking, they'd had a really contentious divorce, so they, they had there a lot of arguing, a lot of um, bad feelings, and we were able to come together, and this was years later, come together and be able to find a resolution for their child who wanted to go to a different school because he was not thriving in the school that he was in. Um, it was, the school was not either parent's top choice, but it ended up being that it was the best choice for their son. Um, and we were able to find that resolution and come to a middle ground and um, he's doing a lot better that way. Um, a, bad a bad case or one that didn't resolve. So I deal a lot with finances, people's finances. Um, and we, I have had cases where people, I mean, even today in court this morning we were talking about child support and people the the discord between them ends up being you know like a 25 30 dollar a month difference but they just cannot agree because both sides have dug their heels in and they're saying i've already moved i've already moved but if you and what i always tell them is okay so how much are you going to pay me to continue to fight over 30 dollars how many months could you have already resolved this if you had just agreed to it? Because it's going to be more expensive to continue to fight. So that's, those don't always resolve as easily, but we have our court, our, the Sonoma County bench is really great at trying to help people resolve things themselves. So I've had judges that offer to schedule settlement conferences so where they work as the mediator. Um, or even we'll just go off the record and have a conversation with us and say, hey, this is where I think it's going to be. Like, are you, do you guys want to try and figure it out on your own? Mm -hmm. um, any other questions, with Grace? Do you have an understanding of what she does for work? Yeah. 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 Okay, there's a lot of big words in there. <laughs> and as I'm looking around the room, I think we have any divorced, do we have any divorced parents in this room? So I, I'm, I was just curious as to if you are understanding what she does for work. She mm -hmm. helps yeah. married couples who no longer want to be married separate, you know, whatever they have together and to try and be as amicable mm -hmm. <laughs> as they can be and help them decide where their child will go or children if they have children together we also help for people that aren't they're not married but they have children together um, so that's another one is helping figure out you know, what and the thing that I enjoy the most about my job is that our focus is the best interest of the child so you know even if it's something that the parents don't particularly want to do it it's always 
you know, what is going to be best for their children. So, and so, mm -hmm. Do you always, um, you meet with the child too? I do not. Um, we have what are called minors council, so there's attorneys that are children's attorneys. Um, I, I help put on a presentation every year to train people to be um, attorneys for children, but I don't do that. So I just meet with the parents and I, um, I try to help the parents. And since you said that you always do what's best for the child, so do you have the attorney who met with their, their ch child or children come and tell you what the child mm -hmm. said and then you'll talk with that to the parents? Yes, so we will meet with the, with the child's um, attorney. We also meet with therapists, so if the children have therapists or if the parents have therapists, we'll meet with them. Um, we really try to keep the children out of the adult issues, mm -hmm. but we do try to take into account you know, okay. what they want and what's, and what's best for them. And sometimes what they want isn't what's best for them. We've had children that say that they want to stay with dad because dad doesn't have a bedtime or they want to stay with mom because mom lets them have ice cream all the time. You know, and that, that's not necessarily what's best for them, but we do try to, to figure out what's best for the family. So there are attorneys that have special training to be able to represent children. So they, so a child can have their own position. So um, what I do is I represent the adults, right? So each adult could have their own attorney. And so they're having their voice heard in court. If we need the child's voice to be heard, then we can have a child's attorney present. And then they then talk to the court and represent to the court what the children are wanting or what's best for the children. Um, do you listen to any types of music? I do. I listen to a little bit of everything except for hard rock. I'm not a, I know like metal. That's a little too much for my anxiety, um, but I listen to everything. I listen to country, I listen to rap, um, I listen to Pitbull. Um, <laughs> so it's, it really depends on what mood I'm in. Could you maybe tell us how you became a lawyer? Like literally, uh, step by step. The school, the school that's involved, the education. So. After high school, you have to go to college, so you do a four-year college, and then you have to go to law school, and law school is at least three years. Um, it can be, I did it in four because I did part-time and I was working during the day. And then after you graduate from college, or from law school, you're still not an attorney, you have to par pass what's called the bar exam. So it is an extra exam, it's a, it used to be a three-day, eight-hour test, they have now changed it to a two-day, eight-hour test, and you have to pass with a certain um, percentage in order to be able to have your license to be an attorney. You also have to pass a background check, um, and once you do all of that, then you get, you get sworn in and you become an officer of the court, so you are an attorney. I am a certified family law specialist, which means that I took yet another test, um, that is a one day like mini bar, it's eight hours, um, and it's all just on family law. What is it like having a test for like eight hours? Yeah. Exhausting. <laughs> so you start at 8.30 in the morning, you get to take a little lunch, and then you take another test. So it's, um, Four hours. when I was, when I took it and it was a three day test, it was the first day, it was three questions in the morning, three essay questions, and then a long, like, um, a long question in the afternoon that was three, three and a half hours. And then the second day, it was all multiple choice. So you did 50 in the morning, 50 in the afternoon. And then the third day was, again, essay questions in the morning and essay questions in the afternoon. So it was, it's draining. I think you had a um, question. Are you like a child custody uh, lawyer? So I do do child custody. Um, Family law is anything to do with families. So it has to do with the, you know, the property that, that adults have. So houses, money, retirement, all of that stuff. Um, it also has to do with anything to do with children. So custody, visitation, child support. 
Um, so it's everything that has to do with the family, essentially. Um, did you do the law school part at UC Davis, or did you go somewhere else for the law school? No, I did undergrad, so college at UC Davis, and then I started law school at um, University of San Francisco, but I finished at Empire College in Santa Rosa. I have two questions for you. Mm -hmm. So, um, do you uh, do you like check in with the families, like and like uh, like? They start off, and then um, a month later, it's like a monthly check-in or something? No, our cases are really depending on what's going on with the cases when I meet with them. So I have some clients that I haven't talked to in a year, because um, there's nothing going on. And then I have other clients that I talk to every day. So it really depends on what's happening in the case, is how often I have to talk to them. And then my second question is, um, have you ever like met with the family, and they're like, and they're like, oh yeah, of course you're gonna do that. Like, and you come up with an idea for them to like um, resolve what they're going through. And then like, they like never like use like they never like resolve it, and they just like keep writing. And yes, um, my job is giving people options and telling them what's best for them based on the options that, that I have. I don't, I can't make a decision for them. I get asked that a lot: is what would you do if if you were me? And I, I, all I can tell them is that I can tell you what you should, what your options are, and then it's up to you. And there's a lot of times that people don't want to pick those options because of a variety of reasons. And they, you know, the saying, cut off your nose to spite your face, where you're willing to do something that's not in your best interest just because you're upset at something else. Um, and so that tends to happen sometimes, and then it's my job to try to get people out of that and to see kind of the bigger picture and not just the anger and frustration that they may be feeling. Do you ever keep in touch with any of your um, people? My clients? Yeah, I have, I, I've had clients that I have been representing them since I started as an attorney eight years ago. And a lot of times, because of the nature of my job, there are people that will go away and then come back. Um, so I, I have several people. Did you have a question? Yes. Um, so let's say like you're meeting with the parents and like what would you do if the parents just started like yelling at each other in front of your face? <laughs> so and just, like, screaming at each other. So in that case, and I've, I have had that happen, um, I set up rules at the beginning of our meetings. Um, if I am the mediator, I go through and I tell them what all my rules are, that we are not gonna talk over each other, everybody's gonna have a chance to say their piece, um, and if someone keeps doing it, then I will separate people, and I will then meet with each each parent by themselves, so instead of us being in a group, so. Anybody else? Oh, yeah. Um, do you usually, like, if it wasn't COVID, like before COVID, do you usually meet in like the courthouse? I meet with, no, I meet in my office. We do, I do go to court, but uh, most of our meetings, like my first meeting with people and any meetings where it's something that's confidential is gonna be at our office or over the phone. Anything else? Who, how do you know about uh, being a lawyer? How did you? make that decision to go into the work. Was that when you were a young girl or was it when you were older? I'm just curious about when you decided to go move in that direction. I have an aunt that was a lawyer in Mexico and being a lawyer in the U.S. is a lot different than, being a, than becoming a lawyer in other places. Um, in Mexico you just go to college, you don't, there's no college law school exam. Um, so I decided when I was young, I want to say in elementary school, that I wanted to be a lawyer. And then um, I had to figure out how to do that because um, my dad does have a college education, but he went to school in Mexico. So my family did not know what it is that we needed to do for me to go to college. So I figured it out. I figured out that I had to take the SAT, that I had to, all the testing I had to do before, what classes to take, um, but my parents were very supportive and were always there to drive me to the SAT classes at 8 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. Um, so 
that was something that I just, as a, when I was young, it really intrigued me. But like I said, I thought it was going to be criminal law. Um, and then I went to law school and I realized what it means and I said, no, thank you. You said that when you were younger, you would go back to, and forth to Mexico. Do you still do that regularly? Do you still have family there? How are they dealing with the pandemic? So I don't go back as often as I would want to. Um, I haven't been back in several years. Um, I do have a lot of family that's still there. Um, I, my grandparents are still there. And it has been, I mean, one of my grandmother lives in a very, very small town. And even there, like, you know, at first they're like, oh, it's too small. Like, no, it's not going to get here and it's fine. And then all of a sudden, people were not doing well, were being hospitalized. Um, so, and the precautions there are not anywhere near what they are here. So it is a little bit scary because my grandparents are older. I have a set of grandparents that are close to 90 years old. Um, so they have just literally not left their house in about a year. Thank you again so very much. We appreciate your time, time away from your baby. So thank you so much for joining us.